President Rodrigo Duterte appoints newly retired military chief Eduardo Año as interior undersecretary. The appointment document was signed Thursday, the day Año formally turned over command of the armed forces to General Ray Guerrero. Duterte repeatedly talked about Año's new role in his administration after he retired from the military service. He said he wanted Año to be in charge of supervising the police as undersecretary or special assistant to the president. Año earlier said he wants to take some time to rest first before he joins the DILG. After the one-year ban on former military generals assuming top civilian posts in government, Duterte plans to appoint Año as interior secretary. The Office of the Ombudsman on Friday in Dykes for Plunder former Immigration Deputy Commissioners Al Argosino and Michael Robles over the 50 million corruption scandal involving gambling tycoon Jack Lamb. Lamb's alleged middleman Wally Sombero is also indicted for plunder, a non-billable offense. The Ombudsman makes the move even after the National Bureau of Investigation only filed a graft complaint against Argosino and Robles, and even if the amount involved was 1,000 pesos less than the minimum threshold for plunder. Republic Act 7659 states that the minimum amount of illegally acquired wealth to qualify as plunder is 50 million pesos. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre earlier told the Senate that a total of 49,999,000 pesos funds were surrendered to authorities in connection with the BI corruption case, not enough for the case to fall under plunder. Argosino and Robles are Aguirre's fraternity brothers at Lex Talionis. The Ombudsman says the two former officials failed to dispute the claims of two business associates of LAM that they received a total of 50 million pesos. Presidential spokesman Ernesto Abella remains at his post. Assistant to the presidential spokesman China Hoxon on Friday says Abella is still carrying out his mandate amid rumors he may soon be replaced. Hoxon, instead of Abella, moderated the Mindanao Hour briefing that morning. Asked where Abelia was, Hoxon says he was not in the building. Hoxon admits she was called only an hour before the briefing to take Abelia's place. He supposedly could not make it to the briefing because he had to attend to an urgent matter. Rumors since last week said Cabayan Representative Harry Roque was offered a palace spokesman post by Duterte. It's also uncertain if Abelia will join Duterte's trip to Japan next week. Abelia is usually part of the president's delegation to foreign countries during which he presides over press briefings. Still on the OPS, the office's verified Facebook account is also caught commenting in troll-like language on a live video of the Mindanao Hour briefing. The Office of the Presidential Spokesperson Facebook account, a verified one, comments at around 11.30 a.m., quote, Pia and Lord De Vera are now even in terms of being jerks. The comment was posted during the question-and-answer portion of the Mindanao Hour press briefing. The comment refers to Raptors Malacanang reporter Pia Ranada and writer, musician, and television new anchor Lord De Vera. The comment pops out soon after Ranada, the only reporter named Pia at the briefing, asked a question about foreign assistance. The OPS in a statement says the comment was written by a former administrator of the page who is no longer connected with the office. It also says it immediately removed the former administrator's access to the page and restricted page roles. The OPS adds, quote, The said comment does not reflect the official and personal views of the presidential spokesperson or his office on the individuals being referred to. The Philippine military is investigating the supposed beating by soldiers of a terrorist in Marawi City, an incident caught on video. Armed Forces spokesman Restituto Padilla says the military does not tolerate abuse of prisoners of war. Padilla says, quote, That is not right and we will get to the bottom of it. So an investigation has been launched. The video, made public by JMA News, shows what appears to be a captive of soldiers in Marawi kneeling muddied and bloodied on the ground as he is taunted by uniformed soldiers. As he is led away, some soldiers can be seen kicking and hitting him. Padilla says the military is still verifying the details of the video. He also asks for understanding because emotions are running high. Padilla also raises the possibility the video could have been spread by terrorists themselves to fuel hate for Filipino soldiers. Thailand's new king picked bits of bone and ash from his father's remains Friday to be enshrined as royal relics. The cremation of the late King Pumipon Adunyade caps an extravagant funeral that brought the nation to a standstill. The lighting of the funeral pyre late Thursday night, which was held out of view, closes the book on the 70-year reign of a monarch who was elevated to saint-like status. The five-day funeral, which concludes Sunday and cost some $90 million, 
seized the attention of a nation where love for Pumipon runs deep. About 300,000 mourners in black cram into Bangkok's old quarter to get close to the four-hour procession that delivered the funeral urn to the decorated crematorium. 